In today's video, I'm going to share with you a story that's really close to my heart. And if you related to the title of this video, I believe this story and this video is going to give you hope and freedom that you've been looking for. This is a story of Samantha. Samantha grew up in a Christian household. She go, went to Sunday school. She went to youth group. She served at the church. She even gave her testimony in front of the whole church when she was about to be baptized. She was excited about, excited about saying like what God was doing in her life. She had always had the intention of saving herself for marriage, that her first time would be with her husband, and that that would be really special. Um, people at school would ask her, and she would always be like, yeah, I'm saving myself for marriage, and gave her some sort of excitement, maybe even a little bit of pride in the decision that she was making. On one occasion, though, her commitment, her vigor wasn't enough, and she made a mistake. All of a sudden, all these feelings of shame and guilt and disgustedness and how could I do this? How, how could I screw up so badly? What are people going to think of me? I can never show my face at church again. I can never tell my parents about this. How could I do this? And all these thoughts, these messages of youth conferences she went to years ago of a piece of paper being passed around and the, the leader saying, you know, pass it around, get, you know, everyone kind of crumple it up a little bit and get it back to the front. And all of a sudden the, the leader holds it up and he says, do you think anyone can make this paper uncrumpled? No, once it's crumpled, it's crumpled. And then he passes around a piece of tape and he encourages each of the students to put it on their wrist and then pull it off and put it on their wrist and pull it off and continue to pass it down. And it gets back to the speaker and the, the leader of the conference. And he says, look, it's not sticky anymore. He tries to put it on his wrist. It's not sticky. All of a sudden, Samantha is filled with guilt and shame. She sees herself as that paper that's been crumpled that can't be uncrumpled or that tape that was once sticky that now is dull. She feels like there's no path forward. She encounters two types of people. One is her friend, Stacy. Stacy kind of goes to a seeker sensitive church that doesn't really open the Bible too much. Stacy herself is a self proclaimed progressive Christian. And Stacy says, Hey, like Samantha, it doesn't even matter. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. That kind of sexual ethics thing, that's for the past. God just cares about you loving Him and loving other people. That's all that matters. Then Samantha builds up the courage to talk to her mom. Now, her mom is a strong believer, always been thoughtful about reading the Bible to her kids and always wanted to raise her kids according to God's way. But when Samantha opens up about what she did and what happened, something triggers inside the mom and she lashes out. How could you do this? How could you do this? I thought I taught you better. Don't you know what it says in the Bible? And here Samantha is feeling like, wow, there's really no hope for me. Like I really screwed up beyond the point of repair. Now here's the thing. I believe that Satan is working through both these individuals. Stacy says, hey, there's no problem. Doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Keep living the way you want to. That's a message of the devil. That's a message of the evil one that we can continue to live the way we want to. And there's no consequences. There's no ramifications. But also he's speaking through her mom in that there's no redemption. There's no path out. There's no hope. There's no path of, of new life. That's not true either. I believe Jesus says something very different to us, and he illustrates it in one of the Bible passages and stories of him we read. He, he meets this woman. He actually kind of sees this crowd forming. And it's all these religious leaders, and they're crowded around a woman who was caught in adultery. Now, he cramps through the crowd, and he says, If any of you haven't sinned, then cast the first stone. And all of a sudden, one by one, they depart, they leave. And this woman is left there, vulnerable, anxiety-filled, shame-filled. And Jesus says, go and sin no more. You see what's happening here. Jesus cast away those who would cast condemnation, and yet he called her to something different. He called her to repentance, to, to turn away from her lifestyle, to go and sin no more. The truth is the devil will try to convince you that there's no hope, that all is lost. And he'll feed into that. He'll feed into those feelings of shame, of guilt, of I'm so disgusting. And also feed into those, those feelings of, I guess this is who I am. I guess this is my path now. I guess I don't care about all those rules in the Bible anymore because I can't measure up to them anyway. He wants to use those things to control you, to lead you down this path of hopelessness, of numbness. Listen, friend. There is hope for you. All is not lost. All those people that tried to say that there's no hope, that, that you're too far gone, or even those voices in your head that tell you that, 
that's not God. That's not God at all. Since when is God saying to people, you're too far gone from me. You're too far gone from my love. I can't save you. I can't love you. You're not mine anymore. No. Like, friend, think of the prodigal son. He comes back and he wants to submit himself as a slave after he blew all that the father had given him. And the father welcomes him back with celebration. My son has returned. And while other people might look at you like the older son in that story and say, but I've been working in the field this whole time. Why does he get a party? He doesn't deserve it. The father looks at you and he rejoices that you've returned home. The father looks at you and he rejoices that you've come back. Shame wants to tell you that there's no way out. There's no way out. Jesus wants to tell you that he is the way out. Satan will say, hey, there's no path. This pit that you're in, it's just, you can't get out. And the second you get out, you just look disgusting. God says, I'll give you new clothes. I'll give you a new identity. I'll wash you white as snow. That's my, that's my promise to you. Hey guys, I just want to pop in real quick to let you know about Covenant Eyes. I know a lot of us struggle with online lust, right? Maybe there's some addiction there. There's things that are going unconfessed there. You want an accountability partner? Well, here is how we can do it. Is if you sign up for Covenant Eyes, it's 30 days free. You can sign up and it'll send an email to somebody in your life with a report of all your internet usage, what you've been up to. And it's going to prevent you from feeling like, okay, I, I can look at this stuff, right? It's going to create that extra boundary of making sure that you stay off those sites that you know you want to stay off of, okay? So sign up. This is an affiliate link. So by signing up, you're also helping my ministry as well. Um, so it's a win-win situation. Thank you so much, guys. Hope you check it out and hope you're benefited from it. One of the saddest things that I see is that when people fall into sexual sin, they leave it secret. They leave it secret. They never confess it to anybody because it's too dirty. It's too disgusting. How could I do this? And they suppress it and maybe they continue in that cycle or they just have this deep anxiety about the sin that they've committed and they keep it suppressed. Sin never does good when it's suppressed like that. It never does well. It's never going to help you to have a wound or a sin that goes untreated. Look, you need to deal with that friend. It's going to come out somehow within you, right? And so I want you to experience freedom. I want you to confess that to somebody in your life. And I want you to actually experience healing and wholeness. The truth about Samantha is she let the words of her mom get to her. This shaming, this, there's no path out. And so she felt hopeless. So she basically just continued on that path. She, she felt like there's no way out of this. There's no way out of this. That doesn't have to be your story. That doesn't have to be your story. You understand God cares for you. He wants you, that you're not too far gone, that that shame and those lies that the evil one is telling you, it's a tool to put you in his camp. It's a tool to draw you down this dark path of hopelessness. No, that's not the answer. That's not the message. Jesus wants you. I hope you got something from this video. I hope it freed you in some way. I hope God is going to use it in your life. Uh, thank you to everyone who watches my content and supports me on Patreon. That's the way I continue to support this ministry and my family. So thank you to everyone who signs up on there. Until next time, God bless.